So I'm currently reading a book called The Anxious Generation. And it's a very interesting book because it talks about uh, basically generation Gen Z. So he talks about how Gen Z pretty much grew up at the boom of technology, where social media had no rules, the internet had no rules, which eventually, the author is trying to make this argument, resulted to an anxious generation that co- that's constantly on online, comparing themselves to their peers and to other people. But you both work in the field where you get to encounter the youth of today, right? You get to minister to them, you get to know them intentionally and deeply. So I wanted to ask you, how would you describe the youth of today? Ano ba yung identities nila? Ano yung aspirations nila? And what sets them apart from the generations before them? Or tayo mga millennials or even the older generations pa? Yeah, um... I think I really want to jump off of that, that they are basically digital natives. Mm. So it means that they grew up in a generation where technology was readily available for them. Unlike maybe us millennials that uh, we still had a normal telephone (laughs) that you could (laughs) ring up and still be able to live lives playing outside. My dial-up internet. My my (laughs) dial-up. But now, you don't see people as much as you want playing outside as much as we did. They grew up in a generation that was really in face of a screen. But at the same time, they're very entrepreneurial. They know how to be able to make things work. Uh, They are very intelligent. They know how to ask good questions. And um, they're very um, smart to be able to work than our age. Like We didn't care about anything. But for them, as young as a teenager, they're already involved with so much information making them ask many, many questions. I think it, is, it was Chase Dosso said that uh, uh, Gen Z occupy world that we don't have. Mm. Um, they are really, uh, as what JC said, that they're very in, uh, intelligent. And they nga tawag sa kanila iGen. Diba? And at the same time, I see that their sense of self comes from their success in uh, mm-hmm. career or sa education. Um, iba sila sa ibang generation because other generations, medyo sa family pa natin, kinukuha yung sense of natin, self natin. But sila sa career and sa education. That's why the people I encounter, uh, the, 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 young, the youth uh, in the campus, sobrang ano sila, sobrang game silang mag uh, sali sa orgs where they will, you know, um, utilize their skills and at the same time, build connections for the future. So, mm. But you know, interesting, Pastor and Kuya JC, no? it's, it's weird because I, I recently went to a university event and it was a Christian event. The ang, ang topic namin is how to foster deep and genuine friendships. So it's, it's interesting contrast na yung generation ngayon, sobrang intelligent nila. They ask good questions. But one of the things that they really struggle with is fostering deep relationships. So parang ganyan, they're very good at getting into organizations. They know how to succeed in organizations. But they told me, and these young ch- young children today, <laughs> shows the age gap. Uh, shows the age gap. Eh, no? But when I see 18 year olds, because I'm 31, I'm like, you're a child to me. Like, you're very young. You have a lot of things that you'll still be experiencing. When I talk to them, sabi nila, it's easy for us to build connections when we have a common goal of succeeding. But it's hard for us to foster deep, intimate relationships where we really get to know each other's hearts and minds. Why do you think that's happening right now to our youth today? And ano ba yung stance nila ngayon sa faith and spirituality? Because let's be honest, it's it's really rooted a lot in faith and spirituality, di ba? Kasi ngayon, yun nga eh, ang basis for your value, and I'm not demonizing social media, there's a lot of good that can come from social media and the internet, ang basis ng value natin ngayon, a lot of it comes from social media. Our basis for morality and truth, a lot of it comes from social media. And you see a lot of our young people now kind of grappling with that push and pull, mm, diba? Yeah. I think this generation kasi values uh, social justice. Uh, they value um, uh, yung safe place, mm-hmm. yung safety nila. So I think those are the things that contribute to their lack of in-depth relationship. Why? Because medyo takot silang magpumasok sa mas malalim na relationship because that might lead to when you enter a deep relationship, medyo vulnerable ka. And that might lead to embarrassment or brokenness na ma, alam mo yun, baka mabitray sila. So they try to at least parang medyo 
one step backward yung sa relationship. So they're the most uh, socially connected when it comes to social media. But alam natin yung in-depth relationship, hindi sila ganun kalalim. Mm. And so I think um yung sinabi mo rin kanina, Miss Joyce, yung I think um pagdating sa faith, sa spirituality, um they're very tolerant. They many according to studies, maraming mga Gen Zs ngayon, they actually say that they're atheist. But when you ask them, they're not really atheists, they're agnostics. They just don't care about God, about faith, about these things because they don't see these things relevant. And so, especially pag tayo, we want to be f- friends with them, some of them would say, oh, I don't want that because very exclusive. Kayo. Very so exclusive does that make it easier or harder to share the gospel? If you don't mind me asking from your own experience. Because it's, it's yeah. complicated. Yes, eh. yes, it's very challenging actually. Mm-hmm. You really have to spend time with them and be intentional with them and just befriend them. So that you will be able to to earn their trust. Because it's important sa kanila yung trust, eh, because they value safety. They also will test you if safe batong taong to, mapagkakatiwalaan batong taong to. JC, from your yeah, experience, d- definitely. Uh, I think uh, the pandemic made it even worse. They were already digital natives. They were already hard to be uh, connect socially. Then the pandemic happened, making them even more isolated. So having, what, a good three years of their lives totally on their own, not allowed to go out, not allowed to build relationships. I, I can imagine it even worse for Gen Alpha, having kids that doesn't mean exposed to your titas, titas, mm. or other friends, right? So here, building that kind of relationship. I have a really good quote that says, you know, we need to build relationships face-to-face, not thumb-to-thumb. Because mm, for many of them, really, their relationships are thumb-to-thumb. So they can always post... Um, a different version of themselves when it's not face to face. Unlike building relationships that are connections, sharing a meal together, going out and doing activities together, you see vulnerability there. But because their friendships are built on messaging apps and other forms of uh, connections, then it's really very difficult to build that strong physical face to face relationships. One thing also I would like to add um, this generation is looking for a community, a better community. But they don't know how to cultivate that. That's the thing. The, the fact that they're posting on social media and they're, they're, they're looking for likes or hearts, you know, it's, it's a cry for like me, value me, want me. And you can, you, you can get that from relationships, from deep, meaningful relationships. And so I think yun yung kailangan i bridge natin, yung turuan sila, paano mag cultivate ng ganong classing relationship. Mm. I wanted to share from this book that I'm reading right now. No, the author uh, he contrasts yung childhood daw natin before it's play based, and now for this generation it's phone based. And he was trying to make the explanation that during the growth period of the brain, yung play based is so important because that's how you learn how to negotiate. Or sino ba magsisiso now? Or pa- that's how you learn how to um, take uh, rejection. Oh, ayo ipaheram sa akin yung toy ganyan. So a lot of us, by nature, we need that kind of face-to-face interaction, playing together, you know, jumping off of um, chairs and things like that, and playing with other kids because that's the foundational skill development that we use to eventually build relationships in the real world. Now, the reason why this particular generation struggles with, you know, relationship building is because hindi nila nagawa yung play-based childhood na yon. Phone-based yung childhood nila. So as you mentioned, it's hard for them to really connect with others because nung mga times na dapat naglalaro sila, ang ginagawa nila text or naglalaro ng video games and it's it's really hard, no? You you have to have compassion for for our youth today because we we see them with a lot of intellect, with a, a passion for doing the right things, but they don't it's they don't know how to direct it, diba? Um And I think one of the ways that we can really serve the Lord in this particular field is building intentional relationships with the youth of today, whether that's through ministry or even through our families or family friends na talagang nakaka-interact natin.